bros, does a day not go by where normies don't ruin everything? That's right, I want to talk about interspecies reviewers or Ishuzoku reviewers and the importance of pretense. Because this show, if you can believe it, isn't actually one of the most etchy shows out there. In fact, it's pretty tame compared to the other stuff I've seen. So before we get started, I'd like to set kind of the stage for what happened. Uh, I'm pretty sure you know the story, but essentially what happened was Funimation picked up the series and then they subsequently dropped the series after episode five. They hired a bunch of voice actors. They intended to dub it, but then on episode five, they're like, you know what, pull the plug. This is actually too insane even for us. And then this led everyone and their mother to go out and watch this show. And if you're a normie who mostly just watches My Hero Academia, maybe you dabble in a bit of Naruto and Bleach and you just watch your battle shonens, or maybe you've dabbled in a little bit of rom-com, the most fan service you've ever been exposed to is probably like an upskirt here or there, or maybe the dude falls on the girl, or maybe in your favorite battle shonen, there's like a high kick and you see her panties, something like that. It's not too insane. It's insane by Western standards, but by Eastern standards, it's like, you know, what, whatever, man. So then you suddenly have all these normies watch Ishuzoku reviewers and they're like, oh my god, this is hentai, no wonder Funimation dropped it. But for someone like me who's seen a lot of ecchi series and who pretty much grew up watching these ecchi series because that's their target demographic, teenage boys, like that is, you know, who they want to target, so I watch a lot of these series. This is actually pretty tame by ecchi standards. Like, this isn't that insane. In terms of animation, in terms of plot though, it drops all pretense. In terms of plot, it goes too far. I think that's why people dropped it. It's the story, which is why people dropped it. Not because of the animation, because I've seen some crazier shit happen in other ecchi series. In fact, I actually had this whole section planned where I would bring up scenes and I was gonna censor it and then you would be like, oh my God, this isn't actually that bad. But I don't think even if I did censor it, I don't think YouTube would let it fly. So I'm gonna have to describe it to you in graphic audio so maybe you can understand what's going on. So in To Love Rue Darkness, which is another etchy series, or maybe it wasn't Darkness, maybe it was the previous series, but essentially our main character gets turned into his sister's underwear, right? And then she puts him on and then she goes about her daily business and then she goes to the restroom. Like, it is insane what the other ecchi series do. Or you have other shows like the Quasar of Stigmata. Like, this show is so insane. Like, the dude only powers up if he sucks on big anime titties. Like, that is essentially the whole premise of this show is he only can power up if he sucks on the titties of cute anime girls. You know what, I think these descriptions are actually getting too graphic as well. You know what, just take my word for it. Just watch Quasar of Stigmata, watch um, Kiss Exis, I don't know, watch some of the mainstream other ecchi shows, and you will know that this show is not that insane. This show is actually pretty tame in terms of animation, not in terms of plot, but in terms of the animation of what is actually being portrayed on screen. This is either about the same or a bit lower than what I've seen that's out there in terms of ecchi. So why did Funimation drop it? You know, Funimation probably isn't made up of 100% normies. They've probably got some neckbeards like myself working there and they're like, hmm, I've seen, I, I, well, yes, I, I am a connoisseur of edgy. How, how could you tell? Yes, yes, it's, it, this isn't too bad. Hmm, the animation is quite okay. So why did they drop it after episode five? Why, what happened? I think it's because of the lack of pretense. All right, let's talk about the Japanese porn laws for a bit. So essentially anything about penetration is wrong, which is why if you read any hentai or watch any hentai, it's always blurred out or there's some black bars because they cannot show anything with penetration because penetration means sex. They can't show sex. But if you don't show penetration, then it is technically not sex. So essentially the porn actors, what they're doing is they're pretending to have sex while actually having sex, but pretending they're not actually having sex. So they're pretending that they are pretending. So it's a double pretend that cancels each other out. So as you're watching, you're like, this is straight up porn. But to the law, this double pretend, this double barrier makes it so it's all hunky-dory, that it's all okay. So essentially pretense is king and pretense is exactly what Ishuzoku reviewers is missing. Because in Ishuzoku reviewers, they are literally actually having sex. There is no, oh, uh, it's actually a dream in my head and it's not actually happening. Or, oh man, I got turned into my sister's underwear. Oh, what, this is insane. Like, no, they are straight up having sex in the lore of the show. This is actually happening right now. There's no smoke and mirrors. It is presented in front of you. This is essentially what acts the series because this series is very tame. If you think about it, if you think about it, 
they never show any of the good parts. You know what I'm saying? Like you'll see some anime titties on the uncensored version and they aired the censored version. So there really isn't any issue, but it comes down to the story, the plot, the lore which is also Ishizoku reviewers greatest strength. The lore of the show is just so rich. When you look at shows like Kiss Exis, when you look at McKenki, when you look at Sex Stigmata of Quasar, these shows lacked the, okay, maybe not Stigmata of Quasar, but definitely Kiss Exis. These shows lacked the lore. They lacked the reason why these things are going on. It wasn't built up. It wasn't explained. Like why that one part, when they go to the Cyclops brothel and they explain the size of the eyes and the magic trait, like all this stuff helps to build up what is going on we need that kind of build up we need that thing supporting kind of the etchiness of the series the etchiness cannot carry a show on its own the lore the story is what matters you know what this is probably going to be my go-to argument when people say story doesn't matter in like these kind of things if the animation is good enough it can carry it maybe to a certain extent but the story still needs to be there and i think the story pretty much carries this show. Maybe not 100%, but I'd say it's maybe like a 60% in favor of story with 40% in favor of the animation. But I don't want to sell the music short. The music is definitely really, really good. In fact, the main reason why I started watching the show is because someone posted the OP on YouTube and it was recommended to me. And the music, that opening song, it's just, it's too good. Just like the ending song. The ending song is also really, really good. In fact, if someone could point me in the direction of what type of music the ending song is, I know it's a type of Enka, but I couldn't find like the specific type of Enka music it is. If someone could let me know in the comments down below what type of Enka music it is, that would be very much appreciated. And on one final note, if you really enjoyed Ishizoku reviewers, interspecies reviewers, I strongly urge you to check out the other edgy series to see what I mean, especially something like Quasar of Stigmata, Kiss X Sis, To Love Rue Darkness. Because since those shows are technically about the characters not having sex, they have to do some next level mental gymnastics in order to get the edgy stuff to happen. Think about it, in Interspecies Reviewers, our main characters are just headed to a brothel. The plot just kind of pushes itself forward. But if it's just, I'm a regular high schooler, how am I gonna get into these hijinks? Then they have to do these next level mental gymnastic plot craziness. I tripped over a piece of bread and then I fell onto 600 girls. I don't know, they do some crazy stuff. So I strongly urge you to go out and check these shows out. That's really all I have to say. If you like the video, like and subscribe, do all that stuff. Let me know in the comments if you think the normies ruined interspecies reviewers. Well, they didn't ruin it, but definitely the fandom has gone a little bit more toxic. It used to be pretty tight knit, but now we got some uh, dissidents among us. Anyways, that's really all I have to say, and I'll see you guys on the next one.